to yeah, we've had minutes. to just because we only have an hour to talk about it. We've skipped through a lot of stuff, and so now here's uh, I think what might be the the because right now the timeline I think really sets a very good uh, picture of how things transpired, why they transpired that way, what came first, who responded, why they responded the way they did. Now here I think more important is the numbers and the finances because truth against the machine everything that was in this was donated this was money that was donated by people i actually put money into a corporate con job and again we on the show one of our first shows we helped prom- promote the book when uh, jordan was on and that was during the people summit that was during the people summit yeah. and so here i want to um give people an idea from what we've been able to discover through finances you can imagine jordan a lot of money went into truth against the machine and we're going to go into it more detail but just keep in mind, where do you think these funds were allocated? So Paula for, worked for Truth Against the Machine for three months. She was paid for all her articles, a total of $100, which comes out to about $33 a month. Again, remember, she was not reimbursed for her plane ticket, which was $400. So effectively, working for Truth Against the Machine cost her $100 a month to do. Christian, the editor, Huffington Post, um, was paid $200 over five months of work, which is $40 a month. Summer was paid $100 over four months, or $25 a month. Lauren was paid $100 over three months, or again, $33.33 a month. Tara Lee was paid $200 over 11 months, and she also did additional work helping TYT politics. And corporate con jobs. And corporate con jobs, which effectively still comes out to $18 and 18 Sense them up, and I want to say personally, when I did camera work for Jordan, I was paid three hundred dollars a day, but that was through the Young Turks, not through Truth Against the Machine. Carly was paid eight hundred dollars over four months, or two hundred dollars a month. And uh, Emily, before submitting any work to Truth Against the Machine, was given two hundred and fifty dollars. And we, I want to go back to that when we were talking at the beginning with the. Um, the the the, uh, the summit that was done and this expensive bottle of wine. When you hear expensive bottle of wine, we obviously don't know what restaurant, what what wine that they brought up. But to me, that says at minimum forty dollars. That seems like a fair minimum to call something an expensive bottle of yeah, wine. I, that, I would I expect it to be more, but I want to be very conservative. That's more than everyone except Carly got paid a month just in that one bottle of wine. In late August, uh, Truth Against the Machine received a $55,000 investment, which turned into either a hundred or $150,000 investment. We're going to say 100000 to be as conservative with the numbers we have as possible. And we also know that f- through many of the interviews, Jordan was bragging about this, uh, this uh, uh, donation, this um, investment, I should say, during the summit with multiple people. And so now we want to go to, uh, Paula said that, Truth Against the Machine was supposed to be running on $800 a month. At, you know, at, here at Hard Lens Media, we pride ourselves on keeping our costs low. We run under $250 a month, plus volunteer work that we all do. So that makes sense. That's for a team that they wanted $800 a month. So we did the math. If you take just that base investment at the lowest you can expect it, they should have been funded for over a decade with that investment on its own. And, again, we have everyone that worked for Jordan that we've talked to is paid um, less than uh, $50 a month, except for uh, the rare exception of Carly. Um, So, and now, right now, as of uh, the 8th, which would be yesterday at 5.06 p.m., Corporate Con Job currently has 215 patrons on Patreon. Now, we looked up the average, you know, guesstimation of what an average Patreon viewer gives, and that's about... $9.80. $9.80. So that comes out to, as that estimate, $2,107 a month that is being made on estimate from corporate con job right now, or as of yesterday at 5.06 p.m. In addition, if you go right now to truthagainstthemachine.com slash donate uh, hyphen two uh, backslash, you will see that Carly, who has been the big, uh, has been the, the, in the, in all the other stories, the very big uh, person uh, fighting with Jordan, Summer, Lauren, and Mario, all of which do not work for Truth Against the Machine anymore, are still being advertised as people that you will help if you donate right now to Truth Against the Machine. So even though this fight is happening, Jordan's threatening to sue regarding it, they are still being used on the main page, on the donation page of Truth Against the Machine to show here's the people you're helping, please donate money, 
and the money amounts that they go from all the way from one dollar to a thousand and if you actually add everyone that wasn't Carly or Emily how much they were being paid a month it's about a hundred fifty dollars a month uh, for and that's just maybe one person donating a lot of money mm-hmm. and uh, and that and we'll go into what Lauren because they were they said, what they were told when they were brought on was a little different of how they were got got paid but for right now, it's also good to note that even if you take all of that and you push that aside and say, okay, that doesn't matter what we've just gone through. Um, Jordan said that he would never take a dollar from truth against the machine. Yet, corporate con job was constantly advertised on truth against the machine day in and day out. So what is it advertised for? It's advertised, you know, it's, it, it may be a chapters, but he wants that Patreon donation that we mentioned earlier. So even... If he's not taking, he says he's not taking a dollar for Truth Against the Machine. At minimum, we know it's very obvious he was getting uh, using it as a form of advertising for his own projects. And by Jordan's own admission, the apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan that he rents costs twenty one thousand six hundred dollars a year to live in. So, Lauren, when you were brought on to Truth Against the Machine, what, what were they telling you about how you were going to get paid? Uh, well, initially, um, it wasn't so much a discussion. It was purely kind of a volunteer basis. You know, Truth Against the Machine, it launched in January of this year. They brought on their first official reporter, which, who was Tara Lee Griffin, um, back in February of this year. So, it, you know, trying to get off the ground, um, as far as payment, you know, it wasn't really a discussion until sometime in the summer when uh, some of the upper management um, sent out an email asking for um, PayPal information because we had finally reached a certain amount of donations or because of that investment um, that we would be able, we should be expecting some sort of payment. Now, I want to remind our viewers that not everyone was paid and not everyone was paid fairly. The promise was the more you contributed, whether it was live streaming, um, all of the TATM reporters had uh, access to, um, to be a Facebook Live contributor for the Truth Against the Machine page, as well as, uh, you know, um, social media presence too, um, as well as the Truth Against the Machine official website as well. So we had all of these platforms. The more, you know, some people um, just submitted their work through YouTube videos, or they did live streams, or they did articles. So there were a lot of different ways that people could have contributed. Um, but it was very clear, and almost every person that I've spoken to, um, it, it definitely was not following that protocol. The more you submitted, the more you would receive. Um, and that truth unfortunately revealed itself um, where you have TATM funds were, that were being used to pay for um, one of the member's phone and her phone bill. Some of the funds were used for rent, food, alcohol, that, you know, it wasn't spread out equally, it wasn't spread out fairly, and again, some of the members weren't even paid at all. So again, you have a situation where they're getting investments of at minimum $100,000. You have right now, as again, as of yesterday, an estimated over $2,000 a month to just corporate con job, but we can only imagine, we, can't, we couldn't find uh, access to what Truth Against the Machine itself was making a month, but I would speculate that because of the size of the organization, the fact that he promoted that um, as his big thing, that's probably would be making more a month. So you have, so let's say it makes the exact same amount as corporate conjo. Let's say, so let's say that's about $4,000 a month that's being made. Um, you have this big investment, and yet all the people that are, you know, I would consider the heart and soul of any operation, the people on the ground running it, the journalists doing the work, um, are getting paid nothing. And there's, I mean, it seems very clear that there's funds available. I don't know what they would be investing in for about $4,000 a month plus $100,000 that wouldn't include giving some uh, reasonable amount. Or, because if, correct me if I'm wrong, that the, all the numbers that I mentioned, you know, Paula being 100 over three months, that's really just her working for three months and then one time at some point getting yes. paid a hundred dollars. Most of those were one, a single payment. Okay, so you have these payments being put out, and again, you're still being even though you don't work for TATM anymore, you're still being used to advertise a reason to donate to TATM. So I want to know one thing we couldn't 
uh, get to the true bottom of where's all the money going? Yeah, it's a good question. And, you know, just for perspective, I'll use myself as an example. I submitted about six articles and three videos over the couple of months that I was there and paid $100 for those nine uh, pieces there. Would also one of those videos include that uh, interview that we did with Benjamin Thomas Wolf and Anthony Clark? Mm -hmm. Everything I did. Oh, wow. Jeez. I'm and if I'm not mistaken, when we did that live stream, you got bumped in the live stream because they didn't... Yeah, some... And that was something, I mean, when you have, you know, a team of 20-some uh, reporters, you know, like, they they had a schedule, um, but sometimes, yeah, uh, one of the people I interviewed, she had acquired um, an interview with uh, someone that was very difficult to get a hold of, and um, she had spent days in contact with this person planning out that interview, and then she was bumped for whatever reason. One of the other reporters went live and she she just ended up having to re, um, record it on her own. Um, but stuff like that happened all the time. But you said it was important because she had a very specific title for legal reasons that she had to write the way that she wrote. And during her live stream, the editors changed that title in a way that would actually put the lawyer who she was talking to at grave legal jeopardy. Yes, that as well. Um, and that was pretty uh, common as well. Um, Titles being changed, sometimes not even the the reporters um, not even being aware that those changes were made. Um, but yeah, the the one that that Summer did mention um, did put that that man in in jeopardy. He could have been um, what what is the word? Disbarred. Disbarred. Yes. So again, so this is here's what I took out of the investigation that. I want to know where the funds are going because there's a lot of money that seems to be coming into Truth Against the Machine. It, yet it seems none of the reporters that are doing the work are getting any of it. And we're not, again, we're not talking a small amount. We're talking at least $100,000 and an estimated $4,000 between both networks. You have Jordan saying he's not going to take a single dollar out of this yet. Mm -hmm. Again, at just the summit itself, the meal that they were describing sounded more expensive than what all these people had been paid in the history of uh, working for Truth Against the Machine, the plane tickets themselves for $400, well, that's more than most people got paid by twice. And yet, again, where's that money going? Where is that money going? And then, so then you have the other thing that's just a lot of people not caring about getting the story right from an upper management position. Person goes through a very hard time to get a very hard to reach lawyer trying to do something very specific, talking about something very, very, very um, important. Has to be done a certain way because it's legal. You have to make sure it, it, if it matches the legalese. You, have to, you can't go outside those boundaries. You have people overriding that, not because of mal maliciousness, but just because that it, it sounds better. It's a nicer sounding title. It's more clickbaity. We'll get more views. Oh, by the way, while you're live streaming that, we accidentally double booked. The live stream, again, when we were with Laura and she was live streaming, she got that uh, as well when uh, she was doing that. So, again, we wanted to say from the beginning we didn't really want to address the sexual nature of this because we felt that there was such a – there was a much larger or a more uh, a large scale story about what truth against the machine was and how it was being run. Hard Lens Media.